Hey guys, what's up? FG Seals, I'm Michael. And I'm Anthony. <laughs> We're here to talk about the decade in review of the fighting game community. <laughs> We're talking about like some of the biggest and dumbest and stupidest stories. And greatest. Let's and not, greatest. There were some the triumphs. Greatest. Yes, yes. Even though I, I care more about the dumb stuff. Of course you do. Because I love the idiocy that comes out of FGC. Some of it's just, it's pure gold. Well, we gotta have a balance, you know? Yeah. You can't be all bad. I mean, it's not necessarily bad. It's just your, just your perspective that changes it, pretty much. I could take that. And unlike other episodes, we're going to forego the... What's that frame data? Just this once. Oh, what the hell? <laughs> just I was week. actually prepared this week. Well, I'm sorry. I don't have a move. And we have way too much to talk about. Fine. We'll come back. Don't go, worry, guys. We're going to bring What's That Frame Data back on next episode. Ugh. So... Don't worry. If you enjoy what's that frame data, we will be bringing it back. Hopefully with a jingle next time too. I'm trying to think of one stupid. You are not going to put a jingle. Don't, don't, don't test me. Okay. Don't test my abilities. I hate you. I know. I know you do. All right. Well, since we're going to jump in, let's jump in. All right. Where you want to go first? We have so much to talk about from there. There is oh, quite a bit. A lot say, of stuff happened. You're right. So let's, let's start with something. Let's have some fluffy. Okay. Well, I don't, don't want to say fluffy, but some good. Okay. Killer Instinct reveal. Woo! That was out of nowhere. I remember when we were doing like the first starts of our show, and they had member um um who was it? Microsoft got the rights to Rare. I'm like, they ain't even do nothing with that, right? I kept saying that. I'm like, they ain't even do nothing who, with that. Who didn't say that? They, Everybody was like, they ain't making doing nothing with that. I mean, what they do with it before, like Banjo Kazooie, nuts and bolts. <laughs> Like, and I in was, the Rareware collection? I was 100% sure they weren't going to do anything with that IP after they got the rights to it. They were going to put it on a, um, the Xbox Live or something. Like That's going to be part of the extent of it. And then the trailer dropped. Whew, man, and, that was fire. And we were salty. Yeah, because right after we saw, oh my gosh, this is so amazing. And then we saw Xbox exclusive. I was like, oh, that's garbage. You all know how hard my heart dropped. Yeah. And for that generation, I was like, you know what? Having an Xbox might not be that bad. Yeah, that was one of the things too. Before we got our PS4, like we were both like contemplating, like what we're we gonna get. We were still on the whole like PS3 wave, and we were about to make that jump to the next um generation. Mm-hmm. And we were both like, "What are we gonna get? Are we gonna get a PS4 or or that?" But what made that decision for me will come later. <laughs> oh yeah, that was that was easy after that. But it's funny that Killer Instinct. Pretty came with the model for like fighting games for a while. As far yeah. as like, like DLC and just how they like do seasons and stuff. I don't think any game was doing seasons until Killer Instinct did it. Seasons, uh, the way they kept on putting out single player content, the net code that I wish everyone would adapt to because <laughs> That's a it's so good. Man, we still talk about that net code stuff to this day. Like we are still having a problem with net code right now in 2020. That's because there's people out there that don't understand why we need good netcode. And there are people out there that's like, well, actually, the way base isn't that bad. And I think it's better to roll back. Despite the fact that there are so many studies that show that it's worse. And yeah. Why it's worse. Yeah, like even um, Mr. Adam Keats did like that. Um, He did a sit down. I forgot, I forgot what complication it was. And he went over like how rollback netcode works and how great it is and why it should be used and implemented. Like he's one of the people a part of GGPO. I mean, he was on a team with Killer Instinct. And you still got these tin hat wearing mofos <laughs> going like. <laughs> Not tin hat. <laughs> <laughs> well, I actually don't believe the evidence. We won. We won the labels. I mean, has it ever failed us in the past? <laughs> yes. Like every anime fighter, every single one. Ugh, all of them. It's bad netcode. Like just awful. You want to know bad netcode? I challenge you to play KOF thirteen or fourteen, or Sam Show, or Guilty Gear. Pick, t- pick your poison on or that one. Or Blaze Blue or the Gunky Bunko. Um, I feel like the best experience I've had with their net codes is probably like Blaze Blue um, Cross Tag Battle. Cross Tag is a pretty decent one compared to the other one. I don't know what they did differently with that one, but it's not the worst. It's probably one of the better ones, but and it's I'm still sure, not great. I'm sure there's somebody, see, see, the net code works. I think one of the issues is that Street Fighter 5's like, 
netcode being that it was uh rollback and it wasn't implemented that great is why people still think it's not that good of a thing <sighs> like that's probably a big one but even but even, then but even street fire five's like kind of shitty version of rollback is still better than most delay based netcodes Okay, I I can roll with that. Like it's crappy, but I re- I'm able to actually get matches in. But over that, we're trying to play like KOF, but the screen just freezes, like, and, I, you, and then it kicks you out. Yeah, like I've had better experiences with Street Fighter Five. I had a lot of other games, but even Street Fighter Five's uh, rollback isn't that great. It's you know just what rough. Is great? Killer Instinct. K- Killer Instincts. Killer Instinct's netcode is amazing. Yeah, it's it should. I think Killer Instinct pretty much did everything everything everybody wanted in a fighting game. It gave you single player stuff. It gave you clean costumes. It gave you extra characters, and it was free to play when it first came out. And the music is so good. Phenomenal, phenomenal. Like it's just such a. It's a, it's pretty much the benchmark I think for fighting games, as far as like what people want in it. To this day, people are are pra- People have praised it more over time because at first people didn't believe because the Xbox One wasn't that popular yet. Yeah. And people are like, just pour it over the PS4. Myself included, I will admit. Yeah, then they ported it to um, it went on PC, which opened up the fan base a little bit more. But you know, PS4 plays are still on the code. But if you really want a KOF, KOF, God, Killer Instinct, you were either gonna have to do PC or uh, Xbox. And you need a good PC. I don't want to just put it out there. Like you need a pretty decent piece to run it. I'm still thinking about getting one. Just making a PC and just playing it? No. The Xbox. Oh, yeah. Xboxes. They're getting cheaper. I'd say just yeah. wait till it's like super cheap and just get it there. Like, yeah. That's cause, probably what I'll do. Because KI is like usually on sale too. Like I bought it like four times now. So. I mean, yeah, I could get a PC and it would last me on the long run, but you know. It's a lot of work. Like, it is. People think just getting a PC, just, oh, just get a PC. No, you have to continuously work at it. You got to continue to get drivers and updates and stuff like that. Make sure it works for your PC and stuff. It's not just a pick up and like easily a plug and play thing that like people make it out to be. And plus, I, I'm kind of, I, I want to show my stuff off, man. Like I want the LEDs. I want the like the cooling with the water in it. I want all that cool stuff, man. I want to be able to take a picture of my stuff and put it on Reddit. People are like, now that's, that's PC. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. I kind of do. I want to show it off. You just want to be flossing and you yes, want to be flexing. I want to flex. <sighs> I want to have PC with power and clout. Really? Yes. All in all, Killer Instinct did what we need to be done with fighting games. Hopefully, more companies look at it, but they're not. Like, that's the world of problem I see. A lot, a lot of companies looking at it as a because standard. Because Japanese developers are too proud for that shit. Yeah. They want to be like, nah, we're not going to copy you. We're going to do better and they really haven't it's like every fighting game has pretty much done a few things right but none of them has done all of the things right yeah killer instinct has done all the things right yeah I think. so ki okay, hopefully the part two you. comes out i'm wanting i hope a part two comes if hopefully- a part two comes out then i i will know i will not question it and i will get the Xbox um, storage box, <laughs> Xbox I, storage I will box. get the Xbox file cabinet all right, let's move to the next story. Where do you want to go next with this? All right, so we started with something nice and, and positive and mm-hmm. all that stuff. Uh, Let's talk about Street Fighter Cross Tekken and Tekken Cross Street Fighter. Yeah, one's vaporware and one... Yeah, one Harada Kison trying to keep that dream alive, and the other one was a... It was a comedy of errors. Yeah. It was a tragedy, but it's actually more of a comedy. I... <laughs> I'm so sorry. I love that quote. It, it, it's always applicable to stuff like this. <sighs> Anywho, <laughs> I'm gonna go on record and say that I really loved Street Fighter Cross Tekken. Same. I am very willing much to same. put that in top five favorite fighting games. I'm willing to do that. It I was really good. Game. It was so much fun. And I think that the way it was handled and the reception is what killed it. But I don't blame the player base. I blame Capcom almost exclusively because of three big reasons. One, the their DLC practices were garbage. Ooh, on this DLC. The on this DLC, the gym packs. Ugh. Because some of those gems were 
busted. Yeah. And if you didn't buy them, you are at a severe disadvantage. Yeah, the gems were such an integral part of like top. And they play. gave you no option to turn it off. That I think that would have been a that they were so gung ho about this whole gym system. Like, just turn them off for like pro play and just keep it for like casual. Like the thing is, right? You could go in with no gems, but there's no guarantee your opponent will do the same. And if they do, and they're out here dealing more damage or getting more meter and all that stuff, that that's I mean, it, it sucks. <sighs> so that was that. The DLC practices. The state of it at launch was also another problem it had. Yeah, some bugs in it that they, they didn't um, iron out. Um, let's see. There was the Relento knife projectile glitch. Which I've seen more times than I'd ever did, too. Man, there were people who... I <laughs> I refused to fight Relentos after a while. <laughs> if I saw a Relento, I just quit. Because they knew they would probably do it. Yep. <laughs> and, you know, I had Ryu on my team, and I wasn't going to change him out because of these knife-throwing freaks. They thought it was hee-hee-ha-ha. Ha. Yeah, and I'm like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> Bye. So, there was that. There was um just the way the game was when they called it Jab Fighter Cross Tekken. Because jabs were too good, um, the life bars were like recovering too. F- there was a lot of stuff, a lot of technical stuff. Yeah, I mean, they patched it in a 2013 patch, and that made the game so much better. It was, but it, at that point, it was too little, too late. Way too late. I think that on this DLC was probably the biggest hit. Like when people discovered, when people were data minded, right? Start using um Elena early. <sighs> That Rough was time. such a huge. That was that was the like the death nail to that game. Honestly. Right, that that was the nail in the coffin. Which was sad because that game was so much fun. Like, like finding out tech and just putting teams together and just figuring out stuff. That like, that was the fun part about that game. Now, of course, they weren't the only ones doing on this DLC, but they were one of the first. Yep, and they which, were the one that got found out about. Yes, and publicly humiliated about it too. And they swore that it was like. We had to put it there, and, and it's like, there is no good excuse. Nope, not at all. Because what you're essentially telling people is that they paid $60 for a product, and you gated off 12 characters for $20. Yeah, that didn't look too hot. Like, they didn't look good at all. And and their only penance for that was, like, if you bought the Vita version, you got those characters free. The Vita version while it was cute was just not an incentive though it wasn't even though i bought it well you were a faithful of the game i was and i still am i think one of the other issues with that game is that it was juxtaposition between umvc and street fighter 4 right it was right in between those it two had games. to do the right things because marvel was so hype so big and street fighter 4 was well established very well established at this point so this game had to be nearly great and it had to be on its p's and q's all the time and it stumbled coming out the gate and then the stumbling just kept going and going and going <sighs> until eventually even fixing it didn't well fix it i mean they really tried at the very way they tried yeah and it still has a, like I, I can go to a like uh maybe not a local but like, like frosties or something like, the last time I was at Combo Breaker, they had a tournament for it over there. It was small, but it was there. Yeah. So, people still play this game, myself included. It's easy to play it on PC now, too. Yes. Because it was on sale. It's always on sale on PC. Where I play it. Yeah. <sighs> I like this game. I love it. I even did a, I read like a, um, um, what was it? I did a beginner's tutorial series on Street Fighter Cross Tech, I remember. Yeah. Like, I really love playing this game. I love, it gave me what I wanted from Street Fighter 4, but it was just, just enough foot season stuff to make me not want to play like Marvel. It was like right in between both. That's what I like about it. It was kind of like, it gave you the solid fundamental that Street Fighter 4 gives you, even though that game felt like it either went to the extreme of complete fundamentals or complete nonsense. Yeah. While still having enough crazy stuff to make the game interesting, very much so crazy stuff like the wall bounces and the <sighs> the different tag moves you can do and how that functions, and then the the Tekken characters have more juggle stuff than the Capcom characters did. It was just a really good game. Yeah, like I, I enjoyed it a lot. And let's not even talk about the color edits mode. Like that was godlike. And I'm so sad that it never came back. And I understand to some people it may be a little distracting, but hey, man, that was fun. I wanted. 
I wanted my my gray and purple characters, man. I enjoyed making color edits for every character I played to make them look like synchronized team members and stuff. Even though most of my characters like Tron characters after a while. That was kind of a thing. <laughs> All my characters are like white skin, purple, with like some gold accents. <laughs> that, that was just my color scheme. And I wasn't changing it. That was, it was so too much fun. good. Oh, that was such a good. And then T- Tekken Cross Street Fighter never came out. Even though every time Harada's asked about it, he swears it's coming out. He swears it. He says the development. Like, oh, it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Out. You still want that game? Like, I think the last tweet he made was, y'all even want that game still? Yes. Yes, you we waiting? do. I want to see Cammy in the, the Tekken engine so bad. Oh, she would look so good. I want to see, like, a Cammy model. I want to see Balrog in Tekken. That would be so good. I want I, I want to play it still. I will wait till the PS5 comes out to play it. But he playing. He is. All right, what's next for us? Let's see. So I've already done the last. So I can cross that out. We got that one out. All right, so. All right, so let's go to another another nice one because I want to save the heavy stuff for later. Okay. Let's talk about, you know, we're just going to go into like MK stuff really quick. All right. Let's talk about Tweety. Oh, God. That whole debacle was so stupid. Like, him beefing with everybody, and then him supposedly punching somebody, and then it was just a whole lot of, like, unnecessary drama that he was creating, honestly. And, like, guy, let's play the game. Like, I guess he felt upset about the fact, like, people like uh, Chris G were coming into the game. Oh, yeah. Like, he was gatekeeping hard. I think it was part of that, um, who was it? What was the name of that, um, summit they had for MK? Summit of Time? Summit of Power? I think it was Summit of Time. Yeah, it was Summit of Time, because Summit of Power, I think, was for DBZ. Okay. Yeah. And he was upset that Chris G was invited. And then Chris G, like, even gave up his invitation. Well, his invitation was, he gave it up because the people forgot, they didn't forget about that thing he said about black girls, so they had to remind him. Yeah. It was like, uh, remember he said this about black women gamers? Yeah. So, but yeah, but yeah, Tweety's just for what I've seen him to be in the community, he's been really toxic. Like just overall, he just seems really childish, very childish, and just ugh, just not a good person to be around. And the MK community doesn't even need that. Like they've been doing pretty well, yeah, overall, except for a couple of people, a couple of knuckleheads that just make things worse, like Tom Brady. Now that. Ah, for. ah, the scam artist? We can transition right into that because yeah. the Tweety thing was just him whining online and then he like had a whole episode of the tournament like, like the last one he apparently was going to because he's going to stop doing pro stuff. Yeah. He got dropped too if I'm not mistaken. I'm not surprised. I mean, see his meltdown? Yeah. Long, long tweet longer as so he was posting. Christ, tweet longer. That was a mistake. That was definitely a mistake. Um, but yeah, Tom nice Brady. Big of a mistake is giving Tom Brady money, man. So Tom Brady, if you're not familiar, he's one of the I would say OGs of the MK community. He used to be really well known for like I think MK3 and MK. I think he did really well in MK9, if I'm not mistaken. But since then, he hasn't been very visible in the community that much. He's been doing like I think he streams a lot sometimes. And he doesn't have money, quote unquote, to attend events. So a lot of people, a lot of his fans and supporters have been just giving him money, you know, donating to him so he can get to events. Well, he hasn't been going. Like, he'll say he's going to events, but people have came out and said they have not seen him at all. And with his latest uh, debacle, he just, he went radio silent. He tried to scrub all his social media accounts. I'm sure. And uh, the boy is gone. The boy is gone. <laughs> Dunzo, just, just poof. That's so gross. Like people giving you money to go to events because they believe in you, and you still they're taking their money and running away with it. That's so garbage. And it's not like it's, he's the first person to ever do it. I'm sure there's plenty of times this has happened before. You know, scam artists in the in the FGC. We all know a couple scam artists. We could think of some right in our heads. We may even be thinking about the same person. <laughs> but this is about Tom Brady. I think the issue is that since he's such a prolific person in the community, it's just hard to have that happen. Like, it's not just some, it's not just some random rando who was doing it. It was somebody that they knew for years and saw and like saw him being like a like a top player 
for like years. The interesting thing I saw though was that some people were saying this wasn't even Tom Brady's first time doing it. Yeah, I heard that too. It's Which, been quite a few times. My guys. Over like the last couple of years. My boys. It just took like people to finally like, you know, call it out. I think when I finally saw somebody really like big in the scene was like Aquaman came out and said, yeah, he ain't been coming. <laughs> like he said he'll be coming like CEO and stuff. and He just doesn't show up. So trash. Oh, Tom Brady. If you're supporting people, support people. Like don't. But if your people are supporting you, don't just not go. Like, if you don't have no intentions of going, just don't go. Just say, hey, I don't want to go to events anymore. I'm right? done. Just, but don't take people's money. Don't take people's hard-earned money who support you. And they're going. They doing this in good faith that you'll go to this event. And they believe in you. Like, I think the money and people believing in him is the hard part. Like, people wouldn't have been upset if he lost. He just didn't even go. He didn't even try. Like, he just said, nah, I'm, I'm just going to stay home. Man, but I bet that delivery was free from. Him. <laughs> okay, all right. Speaking of free, oh, no, how about going. that Sonic Fox versus Perfect Legend? Listen, 13-0. listen, that was iconic. That was legendary. That's probably one of the single greatest things that happened to FGC of last decade. My man's went thirteen and oh. First he went that first one to ten that zero to ten. Then like, you know, I would come here to fight his Aaron Black, you know, and that that made it worse. That whole speech, like that made it worse. They told him just just let it go. He was like, nah, I gotta say this. Yipes and Spooky were ready to go get dinner. <sighs> Yipes. Shout out to Yipes. Just because. <laughs> and then he got three old again with Aaron Black for his Kung Lao my man's got wiggity washed. Sonic Fox is like one of the most prolific people of the last decade when it comes to fighting games overall. Like the and fact that he was good in so many different fighting games was just unreal. And he's getting good at others. Yeah. Have y'all been watching him play Gil? Yeah. Terrifying. He's, 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 he's leveling up. We might see him in CPT next year. I'm ready well, to this see year. It. I'm ready to see it. I, I want to see it. He just needed a character. He just needed a good character. He was playing Fong last time. Yes, we know. Fong now he has a character that's actually viable. I think once it's all said, I think Gil might be like upper mid tier. I can see it, which is still good, viable. I mean, we just saw Laura win Capcom Cup last year, so look, man, who knows what's gonna happen? We don't, but yeah, that thirteen oh really just like cemented it for Perfect. I haven't seen Perfect. It was Legend. fun to watch, though. I mean, he hasn't really been. He hasn't placed well after that either. Like he hasn't been placing in top anything. Like, I think he was playing DBZ Fires for a while, and he wasn't even placing well in that either. <laughs> it's just been, it's been kind of sad, his his rise and fall. But I think when his rise was going on, he was a little cocky, actually a little too cocky for a while. And now it's like, he got completely humbled. Did he? I think I, so. I'm sure if we go on, like, this Twitter or something, we'll, we'll see how humbled he really is. I mean, he still throws his jabs and stuff and talks garbage every now and then but it's like nobody really listens anymore i wonder if anybody goes around the corner and just whispers sonic fox and he just jumps <laughs> you're disrespectful for that only a little bit <laughs> just whisper sonic fox like that was a good rivalry though well it wasn't even much of a rivalry it was just like that one match and then they just beefed after a while but it's like it didn't really it didn't really help perfect legend at all it kind of like made his his profile a little, like lowered it Speaking of beef, I'm gonna find a way to segue into all beef. By the way, okay, I'm down with that. Let's talk about Smash. Oh, I'm really mad at you for even having to bring this up. <laughs> we could have went our whole lives without me ever having to see that. One of my favorite moments was chilling versus laughing. Oh my god! Because my man's chilling. Oh my god! Put out a diss oh track. God. And that, oh my god. Michael had to oh hear god. it. Oh my god! Didn't need to you, hear that you garbage. Did. You did. He can't rap. And do you know what this is all over, people? A color for Fox in melee. Oh my god! My chilling was like talking all the all the garbage, all the shit. Just it was wonderful. It was it was amazing. That diss track was garbage and you know what my man's went 5-0 <laughs> he lost 5-0 do you know how it must 
feel to have gone through the production yeah. of that track, mm. which, by the way, beat was fire. <laughs> <laughs> this man put effects on the video. He had like a montage and everything. That th- that video had production value. It did. It definitely did. And he went five and oh, and he has to hold that. He has to hold that. But you know what? He's still making music. Is it good? I mean, that's that's subjective. But I don't want to say it's as good as, as the 13 of Nothing is as good as the 13 of Oh, no, not no, no, not even but, a little bit. But I think the whole buildup was good because the diss track was a lot to take in. It was a really terrible. But like the that, fact that he had the audacity to put that online is just like. I mean, it has over a million views. Of course it does. It's and, a smash community. And they wanted to hear him tear down Leffen. Only to get destroyed by Leffen. 5 0, though? Oh, God. I watched that whole 5 0 and. I don't know a whole lot about Melee, but I know a washing when I see it. <laughs> <laughs> the washing of chilling. And it's a shame that we'll never see that happen on the big stage again. At least not at Evo. Oh, oh, is that your way of? Yes, that's my segue. Okay. I'm, I'll trust me, I'll get better at this as this goes on. Okay. So, do you want to talk about both the stories of that? We'll, that... we'll start with uh, Nintendo shutting down the stream first because that. That was 2013 that happened. That was rude. That was so rude. That was bad rude. It was like, what? We ain't going to wait for this? Pfft, turn it off. <laughs> Cut the cameras. <laughs> Dead ass. <laughs> that was before <laughs> Nintendo knew where the money was. Yep. This, was this was when Nintendo was being old man Nintendo. Very old man. They, they had that whole creative program going on. That creative was garbage. Where if you make our, if you make content using our stuff, you gotta pay us. <laughs> so- Are you gonna help us make it? <laughs> no. Nintendo We're was- helping you by giving you our game. They were so rude for that. They just cut and, the stream. And now they were like, uh, ha ha. Ah ha ha! <laughs> Cut it! Cut the cameras! <laughs> These are so petty for that. They were super petty, man. I I actually forgot that happened. I did too, but I didn't go look. I felt like it was something missing. I knew that was a big that was a big deal. Man, Nintendo they they were not about sharing. They weren't about like actually putting money or putting support into the community at all. I think they just now started trying yeah. to do it a little bit better. But because before it was like, uh, what are you all doing? <laughs> what, are you all doing? What, what is this? It's like your mom coming home from work and seeing you on the game. What? what? Turn it off. Cut it off. <laughs> Cut it off. Cut it off and go to your room. That's literally what Nintendo did. It was like, what's this? But mom, are we playing? The- I said, Cut it off. <laughs> Ugh. Only for like years later for Melee to take would not be on the stage anymore. It's like damn. Because of Unius, baby. Yes. <laughs> yeah, Unius deserved it. Remember we were like in the four like we were in the forefront of the Unius thing. Look, man. The Unius wave. We were on Unius since it came out. Like on a PS three. We like, and we were like, look, this game deserves better. It did. And it does and it, 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 it's getting better. It is. I'm so happy that it's getting recognition. It took a long time. It took a while. Took almost a decade, but it's it's here. Hey man, I'm just happy it's here. Yeah. I I, I don't want to be that person that's like, uh huh. I've been playing this since it first arrived, since the coding was done. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you're you're new to this, so let me show you the ropes, kid. Like I, dude, I just want people to play this game. Yeah, it's an amazing game. We done two reviews on it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I might do a third. I mean, I'm down. So, you know, Arxis, you know, you and us, we we got a good thing going. We really do. All the stuff that you all ever send us gets really good views. Mm-hmm. So, uh, just up, just slide us that review code. Just, just slide up. it over. I'm so I mean, down. Guilty Gear Strive too. Whatever else you got. Man, to I'm gonna be on that for Guilty Gear Strive as far as like trying to get review code you for know, that. Y'all just, y'all just, just slide it to us. It's fine. Just, just, but yeah, I think one of the remember. Oh yeah, Chillin did that video that um diss track about the fact that Melee got taken off the um, <laughs> roster too. See how it comes full circle. Yes. <laughs> Oh uh, man is a lyrical mastermind. Is he? Was he a part of that cipher? Uh, I don't know, actually. I am not going to look that up. 
I watched the whole thing. Then, and it was very old. all I know is Zero was part of it, and he should not have been. Zero was really awful, but I think he knew he was going to be awful, so I didn't expect him to be good. He at had all. fun though. It looked like he had. Fun. He like he had fun. Now you talk about him being. Do we need to play a clip for the people? No, I, I can pull it up right quick. Why would you do that? I'm just saying, man. It's we could like not do that. You can do it on your own time, guys. All right, all right man. you come here to listen to us talk about it. Not listen to that cipher. All right, man. I'm just saying. Just not My man chilling had bars. He didn't. He really didn't. <laughs> like, not even a little bit. Can't believe you're hating on the scope, but that's fine. <laughs> Speaking of haters, <laughs> let's talk about Street Fighter. Ooh, that's a lot to talk about there. All right. Where we go with that? Because that's so much involved with Street Fighter. Well, I mean, let's start from the beginning because a lot of these stories are intertwined with uh, Street Fighter here. Okay. So let's start from the beginning. Street Fighter Five launches a couple of betas. Oh God, that was life changing. So, so few of them worked, but the ones that it did, did, man, I want the beta version of Kevy back. <laughs> we all want the beta version of Kevy. I want the trailer version of Chun Li. That was b- b- busted, my guy. No, 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 no. Not the double fireball thing, because that's stupid. That was dumb. I'm talking about that wheel kick she's got. In oh, the in the air, air yeah. She had, she had a never, whole air combo, like. And y'all still gave her one. Yeah. How y'all take it out and be like, she don't need one, but give her one anyway. Cause they didn't, they didn't know what they were making when they did that trailer. <laughs> they were just like, let's, let's, just, let's play around a little bit. This is what we could possibly do. And I mean, game. y'all might as well have just given us the, the review. He's, he's that dumb now. He's just like, that, uh, do you see how fast he could throw Hadoukens now? Man, I'm playing some review. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. Yeah, the betas were. That's like the first time I've actually had a beta experience with a fighting game. Yeah, and you, you know, some characters looked really good. Other characters looked really busted. Yeah, other characters were just, you know once Ken the game was developed. B- b- busted as God. Oh, he was so busted in uh-huh. the betas. But then we learned the game. We understood it, and we got to see that you know Ken was actually just okay. Yeah, and there are some characters that just were not good. Yep. Like Vega. Like Fong. <sighs> R.I.P. Vega. He just didn't get it. He never got Vega just never got to where he's supposed to be. Even after his fifth season, he's still not there yet. I just want Street Fighter Four Vega. That's my favorite Vega. That's what I be- he was pretty good at that game. He was, man. But that's okay. More importantly, the uh the divisiveness of this release was Whew. felt. Because of course people were upset that there was no online uh, there was no offline um, player modes. There was no arcade. All you had was story. And no, you didn't have story at the no, time. No, you didn't get story until June. Um, all they had was like training mode and survival. Yeah. And survival was how you got colors. Survival was hard. So they had to adjust the difficulty of survival mode. Ooh, survival, was survival mode was not easy. And, you know, despite the fact that Capcom did say, hey, guys, if you don't want to just play player matches and stuff, don't buy this just yet. If the rest is coming. Yeah. Yeah, people the, still weren't having that one. The problem was that retailers didn't know that, so like retailers just put the game out. Like, so we went to Best Buy or Target or even Ga- I think GameStop did a bad job too. They should have known that beforehand as well because they're more, they have a bigger, they have an actual ear to the game industry, but more than like well, Best Buy. They would. do nothing with it. Here, here's the interactions you get with GameStop. Hey, what's uh, what can I expect from Street Fighter? Street fighting. <laughs> I hate you so much. Am I wrong? You're not wrong in a little. You're not even a little bit wrong. It's just the fact that you said it. <laughs> what you get from Street Fighter? Street Fighter. <laughs> like that's that's all you get from GameStop. That is trash garbage. <laughs> look, Street Fighting. I mean, look. Uh, you know me and GameStop ain't cool like that. I mean, I agree. I don't even shop there very often. I go there out of necessity. Like, I'll never get over the day. I asked a little big plant. This woman looked me in the face <laughs> and said, what system? She didn't know. It's her job to know. About little big planet? That was like Call of Duty to me. <sighs> I had to take a break. I had to take a break because that. I'm trying to say break and breath at the same time. <laughs> I have to, but I had to take both. <laughs> a break and a breath. 
But anyway, on to Street Fighter. Street Fighter Five. The game that wouldn't say die and has sparked many a good moments over oh, time. Oh, some incredible moments. I mean, we got all... Man, <sighs> Street Fighter. Sorry. I'm thinking of all the great matches I played. Street Fighter? I think Street Fighter Five is the one game I actually learned how to play the best out of every fight I ever played in my life. Like, I know how to play this game. I understand when I lose. I understand why I lost. Like, I don't sit there like, man, what, why is this? Why am I losing? Like, I know why I lost. See, and that's that's a pretty good feeling because you don't have to guess yourself. You don't have to guess your ability. You can train and understand things. Now, like I said, this game was very divisive. Very. And it saw some people just kind of not want to be a part of it anymore. Yeah. A lot of players were just saying, screw it. Yeah. And, you know, that's fine. You get it. Every game isn't for everybody. It isn't. But, man. I think it was such like visceral reaction to this game. Like it was very much like a deep visceral hatred for this game. Like you either really liked it or you really hated it. Yeah, it was no in between. And the people who really hated it were vocal, like really vocal, like really vocal. You like this garbage? Yeah, this is just offensive garbage. Why are you playing this? Why? What? What is this filth? Like y'all, y'all. Like they spent four years. They spent the better half of the decade be angry about this game and they still going they still going strong even though now it's probably the best place it's ever been mm-hmm. like it's it's fairly so, balanced it's I mean, so good we might even bring back the game's greatest player who lupe fiasco stop it please stop it stop it stop it. stop 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 that stop that right now <laughs> i i don't understand your your frustration I think I probably had the most fun with Street Fighter Five too. Like I just overall from the betas to now, I still love the game. We played last night. I still have fun with that game. Same. Like, like I still enjoy. I still even if I lose, like man, I lost. God damn it! Like all right, well, I'll learn this character eventually or something. I just, I just always have fun playing it. I mean, yeah, there's some characters I wish hadn't made it in. <laughs> like who? And, you know, kind of ruined the game for me a little bit. Like who? Like E Honda. <laughs> Yeah, or Blanca. He, okay, Blanca, I understand. Blanca still, like, once you play a good Blanca, you're like, why am I playing this game? Because he's but still stupid. Even they cannot turn me off from this game. And I wish that everyone felt that way, but some people have to take a break. Yeah. Some people have to step away from it. Some people like our boy Mike Ross. Oh, yes. Yeah. It's, it's like, as far as the FTC is concerned, especially the the Capcom sect of it, he was a big figurehead in the whole, like, scene, and seeing him take a step back completely. He made that video, and he made that uh, post about people not being his friends, and just, like, the esports, and how it's turned the FGC into a bad place. Like, that was a big deal. And can you say he was that wrong? He wasn't. He, he wasn't. Because, man, for all the esports glitz and glamour, we've seen a lot of stuff happen. Yeah. We've seen players just get completely jettisoned from teams and unable to compete because of all sorts of other regulations and visas and all this stuff. Yeah. And when's the last time you saw Mamichi in an international tournament? <sighs> yeah. I think it's been a while. Did he go to the Capcom Cup this year? No. Oh. Not that I saw. Oh. There's some players who are just, who just cannot play. Yeah. It's the politics of it now, too. It's gotten worse. There's politics about payouts, because now some places require you to have a license for payouts so you don't get your That's money. Japan. Japan has this, like, stupid law, and it's so dumb. Because you can, they consider it gambling. You have to have a license to do professional gaming and stuff in order to get paid. If you don't have the license, you can't get the payout, even if you win. Which raises the question of where the payout goes. Exactly. Like, where's the money going now? Which is so stupid. I mean, it's already hard to get a visa anyway. You're going to put that on it, too. You got to get a visa and a stupid game, a what, professional gaming license. That's dumb. Mm-hmm. And Ugh. then you have the fact that some other games that aren't fighting games pay out so much. Ooh, the gap is huge. And players are feeling, well, if I'm putting in the same amount of work as these players for a different game, how come I'm not getting that payout? Not even a half of it. like Not even a quarter of it sometimes. Like I'll I'll never forget how Tekken World Tour 
Oh yeah, the first one. Yeah, that payout was paltry. Yeah, I think the uh, Battle of the Strongest had a bigger payout. Than yeah, that I was did. just about to get to that. The Battle yeah. of the Strongest. Shout out to that. So much money to yeah. give them such a bigger payout. Yeah, and that was just yipes talking shit on the ra- on um on stream while people play Marvel too. Yeah, it's it's quite a captivating like stream because I've all, we watched a, like quite a bit of it this year. Uh, I wish I could have watched all of it, but man, they 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 really played went for in. twelve hours straight, 16. like they sixteen sixteen yikes. They were on stream for sixteen hours. Oh my god! Shout out to yipes. He is like the real one. And but, that's the FGC. I think. Mike Ross wishes he could still have. Yeah, but it's just not there anymore. It's not. It, it, I mean, it's evolving, and it's evolving at a pace where the problem, I think, is it's evolving too slow for what it wanted to be. Mm-hmm. Like, they want that big payout. They want the big esports stuff, but the problem is that they're still struggling on to get there, and they're not finding a way to, like, get that type of ex- exposure and recognition and money that they think they deserve. But they believe they deserve, and probably so, a lot of them do. And the developers aren't exactly helping nah. because they think that what happens is that you'll get the bigger payout when we get the bigger audience. Thus, we need to make a game to get the big audience. So we got to make the game more accessible for people so everybody can watch it and enjoy it. There's that word, accessible. Yeah, that was a big word for last decade, too, going forward. It was like more games were being more accessible but I don't think it have to be accessible. You should just be more spectator friendly. And that's the way you can do that without, you know, taking away from the comp- the complexity of the game. See, I wouldn't even say that because that's what commentators are for. If a game is difficult to watch, then the commentator should be there to kind of help mitigate that. I mean, yeah, but if a game is just boring to watch, it's boring to watch too. True. I mean, you can only do so much good commentating if the game is just not fun to watch. Like, I'm sure there's plenty of games that you love that may not be that fun to watch. Okay. Yeah, I get that. Like, Second 7 is one of those games where it's fun to watch, it's fun to play, and it's fun to watch people commentate it. Like, it, it's a fun overall. Like, it's a very spectator-friendly game. I kind of feel that... You know what? Now, now that I'm thinking about it, I kind of feel the way about MK11. I like playing it, but watching it's kind of boring. Yeah, but I think it's like a lot of NRS games. I like that. Watching it's kind of dry. What's up, MK... Um, MKX, that was fun to watch. That game was shenanigans all over the place. And I guess it's only boring to watch to me because I understand what they have to do and how the you know the, the footsie game and the pokes and all that stuff. I understand it when I'm in the thick of it, but as I'm watching it, it's like, oh god, all right, he's fishing for this, <laughs> throw for that, and here's the fireball game. <sighs> so where are we gonna go next? We talking about like Capcom and stuff. Well, we can briefly talk about Mena RD winning Capcom Cup. Yeah, that was a big deal. Yeah, because uh, everybody expected Japan to come in and wash everybody. And he it, it, and it wasn't so much that he won. It was who he won with. Yeah, but the, the weird thing is that Birdie was never a bad character, like ever. I don't think there's ever been a point where Birdie was like low tier. Never. He's never been low tier. He's. I remember when I first played like this game, this game is going to be a problem. He's going to be a real issue playing against him. I felt it. Like, in those first couple of months of having Street Fighter Five, I'm like, nah, I see Birdie being kind of, like, top tier. Mm-hmm. And, and while they've nerfed him considerably over the, the course of five seasons now, that doesn't mean he's bad still. Nah. He's not. I think Minor ID kind of, like, put a focal point on him. Like, oh, his character. Time to nerf him. Which I hate. Every every Capcom Cup, after the character went, oh, time to nerf the character. Time to nerf him. Her, der. Yeah. And I guess that's trying to rotate characters to make them seem more interesting. But I don't agree with that, honestly. I don't either. I think this season, they probably did it right by, like, buffing everybody instead of, like, nerfing everybody. Except characters that were clearly problems. Yeah, clearly. Bu- or oh, just busted like they could do, like, you know. What was it, Akuma being able to do fireball into V Trigger? Yeah, that, that was, was bu- bu- busted. That was dumb because he's like the only one that could do him and I think him can can him can and Sakura can do it, but Ryu couldn't. And you know what? Kind of piggybacking off the Mena RD thing, people who just kind of hit the scene and shook up the meta, you know? Oh, that was always great. Like Punk when Punk, he came through with Kari. Shout out to Punk for coming in and messing up the whole like he disrupted the whole scene with the whole time for a long time too. For a long time, like he just came in, 
He played a really good footsie game, and he was winning matches left and right. He was almost unstoppable until his untimely defeat at Evo that year. Yeah. That was his first loss, and it took him a while because he was stumbling for a bit. Yeah. But I think he's found his groove now. He has. All I think all that has to happen now is that he has to win a major because that's the one thing he has kind of struggled to do. I mean, like a major, major, like Evo or Capcom Cup or something. Oh, yeah. He hasn't done that in a while, but he's won other majors throughout the year. Oh, yeah. He's done quite he's, a few. He's definitely a championship winner. It's just, you He know. had the most points, too, this year. Mm-hmm. He had like 4,000. He had more than everybody. So he was racking those points up. But, well, yeah, Minor, it, Minor RD definitely shook up things. I think new players in general just shook up the whole thing. Because it was like, you so used to the same faces from Street Fighter 4. And a lot of people from Street Fighter 4 couldn't transition very well to Street Fighter 5. Yeah, I think Daigo's still kind of, I don't want to say struggling, but. He's doing fairly better than he did before. Remember, when he, like, I think once he got Guile, he started getting more consistent and what's up. I just think that this isn't his favorite game. But no, I don't think so either. To know what his favorite game is, is hard to even grasp because he didn't like Street Fighter 3 either. So. I bet his favorite is like Street Fighter 2. It might be four. I think four might be his favorite. You think so? I think so. I don't know, man. He or two. Like two it's, either, it's either two or four. It's either one of those. But I know he's like three. His manga. Well, yeah. I know. I know three and five are his favorites. He had very specific reasons why too. I'll talk about that later because I didn't know that. What his uh, reasonings behind why he didn't like those? I knew he didn't like Street Fighter three, but I didn't know why. His main thing, I think, was, like, how you do Okizemi in that game. Because of the fact you have parries, it's like, it makes Okizemi, like, useless. Ah. So that's, like, one of his big gripes. He loves Okizemi. He loves Okizemi. Like, it's one of his favorite things. Ah, I see. So, with the parry system, it's like, it kind of, like, makes that null and void. Yeah, maybe 4 is his favorite. Thing. I think 4 is probably his favorite. He loves that game. Speaking of somebody else, let's talk about uh, Mr. Kamo Finn, because he was really important. He was. Like, especially when he became part of Capcom and working with them. He was the person who was in charge of telling all the people, hey, it's fine. It's good. Calm down. It, hey. He it's made okay. me mad with the Street Fighter 4 patches because he would tell you something's good. And it's like, no, sir, you're reducing damage with Cabby. I was very mad. She was still top tier. Hmm? She was still very top tier. I don't care. I don't even care. They kept nerfing her. Every patch. I mean, she just went from the best character in the game to the best character in the game. Whatever. They need to she need to get she she not deserve to get nerfed that often. All I'm saying is that it was okay. Because Of course you say that. Uh, it was okay. Whatever. Confi said a lot of things, especially like the function thing from Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. I mean, function versus function is the game we play. <laughs> I don't know what you play, but that's what I played. Did you see that video that person took all the skins off of the character? They were just like flat characters. No. And it was like function versus function. No. Oh, man. I'm going to find it real quick. You need to see that. It was funny. I'm about to look it up. Yeah. It's not function called... versus function? Yeah, I think that's on there. It was pretty that hilarious. Sounds genius. They took all the, like the skins and stuff, all the characters. They were just like flat based like characters and stuff, indistinguishable of each one, and they were just like fighting and stuff. I think it should be on YouTube still. Ultimate Function versus Function Three. I think that might be it. I'm gonna turn this down so I can see. I I got a whole lot of math things, but oh, what is this? <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Yo, what? <laughs> yep, that's the video. Yo. <laughs> you really can't tell who this is? <laughs> <laughs> function versus function. <laughs> if it's just functions, then we don't care about skins and stuff. Yo, what is this? Foolishness. The internet being the internet. <laughs> you having a good time. Is that, is that our, oh my God. Because I'm, I'm trying to figure out who's what, and that, that's Arthur. Okay. That's, <laughs> it's a function. <laughs> this is this this is silly. I can't believe I've seen that. I uh, what, Under what circumstance would I have seen this? Function? Remember the whole function thing? This is big. What? <laughs> All right. You know what? <laughs> All right. That's enough of that. Peter Kamalfin Rosa. Um, I mean, I think he did a pretty good job in his tenure at um, Capcom. 
I think he had, he was held he was um dealt a really bad hand with some of the properties that he was he was a part of. Yeah. Speaking of which, we need to talk about one of the bigger ones, which is envy. We're gonna talk about Marvel's Capcom in general last time because that was a huge part of the FTC, for better yeah. or worse. Probably the better part was the MVC three years, and the MVC I years were kind of like the downfall years, the bad times. The bad times. So where were you when Marvel's Capcom three was announced? Where was I? Where were you? I want to say I was at home. Yeah. I wanna, yeah. I want to say I was just at home. I was watching. Uh, where was it announced at? I want to say E3. I think was it was E3. Because I remember that trailer came out of uh, Ryu fighting on Wolverine. That was like the first I saw it. Oh, you talking about MC, MVC3? Yeah. Okay. No, I remember where I was then. I was out and about, and I kind of heard it in passing mm-hmm. because I was at a GameStop picking something up. And I heard something about MVC3 being announced, and I was like, that sounds dumb. Why, why would you even believe that? That sounds stupid. They don't even talk about this. <laughs> stupid. And then I get on the internet, and I was like, oh, what a fool I was. So I was very hype. I was at home, I think, when I found out the news was coming out, and I saw that trailer of Ryu fighting uh, Wolverine. Cause I remember before that I was playing like Mugen a lot because there was no new uh, Marvel game, so I was like making Mugen Mugens all the time. And I was like, man, it'd be really good if they made Marvel's Capcom Three finally, but that's never gonna happen. And then poof, it came out of nowhere. I was like, oh my god, what's happening? And then the roster reveals like every couple of months there was a new character getting revealed. And they, oh my god, they revealed Phoenix, only for her to betray me, but that wasn't her fault though. And I was like. At that when I saw it, I was like, "Oh, this looks really cool." But I'm like, "But I, I suck at Marvel too. Why, why would I play this?" It was completely different. It was very different. man. They, they're like night and day when it comes to like gameplay. Like there's they're yeah. not they have similar like you know gameplay thing, but the majority of it like MVC three, and MVC two don't even play nearly similar. I think the only thing game that plays similar to MVC three will probably be TVC. Yeah. Oh, TVC, such a great game, underrated. Underrated. Now, I remember. Gem. That I I let the hype carry me, and I picked it up on a midnight release of the GameStop. Same. (laughs) They even had like a little tournament for it. I won that tournament. I was at a midnight release too, and I remember I got home. I was just playing. I'm like, oh my god, this is this is great. This is amazing. And then I found out. This is where I actually started to like learn about the FGC more when that game came out. Which was probably the best and worst thing that ever happened to me because that's when I learned how I sucked at fighting games. <laughs> yeah, because that's uh MVC three. No, it wasn't. I feel like the game that taught me that I'm not great at fighting games was like Street Fighter four. But then I went to meet even more people, and I'm like, all right, I've been beating people at, at Marvel three. It's no, it's no big deal. So then I went to like this release party tournament thing where I met Kevin Fair and a lot of other oh, people. Oh, yeah. Shout out to Kevin Fair. And one of the people I met, who I know to this day, Jeff, was uh, yes. who I had the misfortune of fighting. And, Jeff wow. Was, Jeff's so good at uh, most fighting games. He finds the dirt really quick. Yeah. Like, I won my first match, and I was like, ha this is nothing. <laughs> this is easy. <laughs> and so here comes Jeff, and I was like, Wow. That's how you play this game. Yep. Wow. Yep. Yep. <laughs> they. I think I had misjudged every character until Maximilian came out with the Sesame Video series. Because nobody was playing Doom, right? Nobody. Nobody was playing, like, Wesker correctly. And then oh, that happened. He taught me Wesker. Oh. <laughs> that's when I started to hate this damn game. <laughs> That's where it began. Is when first I found out that Phoenix had the lowest life in the game. Didn't know that until you know I started dying every time she was on field. Then having to fight Weskers, and I hated Wesker. I started to like hate that game after a while. Sorry, it's okay. He's so cool. It's okay. I- I'm a different person now than I was then. So you'd play it today? Mm. Because uh, we could download that on your PS4 right now. Who am I even play now? Hey, man, play who you want. It's Marvel 3. I don't even know. My team is garbage. I had the 
team benches. That was a garbage team. It was. It was so bad. It, it was. Like, I would have to put, like, Doom on my team, and that's I don't want to do that. Look, man. Against me, you can play one. Like, the only character I was actually decent with was X-23. I knew how to do X-23 garbage. But she didn't have that much, like, really trash, degenerate stuff, though. That was the problem. She was way too honest compared to a lot of the characters in that Same game. Same a person like me who plays Doom because I like Doom. He was, man, he was really good. Then they made him even better in UNBC 3. They gave his foot dives hard knockdowns. Foot dive and the foot dive oh was a true God, he was a he was a problem. A real problem. Like, he was, oh my God. I learned how to like air dash cancel from foot dives and just uh, MVC three. While I disliked playing it, I loved watching it. Watching it was fun. Oh yeah, watching it was hype. I will watch every tournament just about for MVC. I will watch more. I think I know I watch more MVC three tournaments than I did Street Fighter four. I thought I watched Street Fighter four out of necessity. I my favorite player to this day, Marlon Pie. Oh, Marlon Pie was so great to watch. Oh, uh, did he use um Amaterasu? Yeah, Amaterasu. I know he used uh, uh, C Viper. C Viper. His C Viper was disgusting. So good. So uh so good. I enjoyed watching Marvel. The Marvel scene was just that was like the that was the portion of the FGC for the last decade that was like really big. Like that was just like hype. But then Chris G came with more doom. Oh, let's talk about that. Let's talk about more doom because that was a big deal. When the UNFC three came out and they announced Virgil and Virgil became like the best character in the game. He has a nearly full screen heavy. <laughs> Why? He needed it. For what? Because he needs to confirm. Virgil yeah. made that game unplayable for me. I stopped playing online. I'm like, nope, nothing to get me. Touch of Death Combos were too easy. All you had to do was do the combo, get the Gucci belt, do the combo, get the Gucci belt, <laughs> do the combo, death. Because you were building meter all the time. Like, you were doing it all the time with Virgil. And then, like, the Mora Doom setup stuff, which was Morgan doing, what was it? Soul Fist, Soul Fist. Soul Fist with that. Soul Fist, Soul Fist. <laughs> soul, soul Fist. With the Doom soul Assist. Fist, soul Fist. With the Hidden Missiles. Right, you trying to jump out, hit come Hidden Missiles. Like, bro. That, that was such a good assist. Ugh. That was such a good assist. Man, I started just looking at my phone when I saw Chris G come up because you know what's gonna happen. Yep. Soulfish, soulfish, <laughs> soulfish, 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 hit missile. Soulfish, soulfish. <laughs> then Virgil come in out of nowhere, and here she go doing her little little mirror trick. Yeah, that was that was really good. Now other people tried to play this team, but they forgot one very important thing. What you still have to know how to play Morgan. That's true. He did really good playing with Morgan. You know somebody else I like playing um Rivy C three was Kane Blue River. I like this team. Oh, big body. Big body team. I enjoyed that. That was always fun to watch. See big body team. Did he win Evo one year? Yes. Yeah, that was great. UNVC three, while I had my personal misgivings with playing it myself, watching it and the scene itself was just incredible. It was just like tech every day. It was conversations on the line all the time. Like it was such a big deal for everybody. Even though I hated that new DLC pack because there was no female characters added for the UNVC three, but that's a personal thing. I was upset. But maybe your personal grace will be settled in MVCI. Now, okay, I was super psyched for UNVCI. I'm still love the game to this day, but man, it looked crazy. That game is ugly. It's so ugly. And I've seen what they've done with it on PC, and that's fine <laughs> it's still ugly what they should do is just replace all the sprites with like the ones from like what's that game um marvel look, ultimate alliance 3 uh, look if y'all just put out like a mvc3 textures pack or something that will help then not only would it help but i think i would come to the pc side finally because <laughs> i like that game it's so much fun I love everything about the game as far as like playing it. Oh, yeah, playing it is always great, but it's, then you have to look at it. Yeah. You know, looking Just at don't it. look at it close. Like, you don't really, really look at it until you have to see the wind poses. Right. In motion, it's fine. It's fine. But when and you. And some characters, even in the wind poses, are fine. Like Ultron, fine. Jetta. Dormammu, fine. Jetta, fine. 
Ryu, Ryu looks terrible. He looked like he got too many muscles in his face. Um, Chun Li before they fixed her. Oof. Ugh. That was like the big thing of contention. Like, what happened to Chun Li's face? Nothing good. And let's not even talk about the marketing for this game and like the bleed up to it came out. Like, how oh, you were... mean how Marvel had all these restrictions for marketing? Yeah, and then like the people from Marvel were really bad about talking about it. And told Capcom not to, and pretty much just dumped all that responsibility on them. Yeah, especially Peter Kama fame. Like, Rosa. Do you, like, do you know how much we would have just said, like, it just took, like, hey, we can't have the X-Men in there because of licensing. Boom. That would have been such a better thing. People would have been upset, but they would have taken it way better than people even remember the X-Men. Right, like, how? Honestly, we just want to, we, we just want to focus on the now. I mean, at the end of the day, they're just functions, and that was not the way we're to go around that. Was that. Not the good answer. that was not a good way to go about it. That that hurt that game so much. Like that was, it just kind of like put the death nail in that game, honestly. And then let's not even talk about the Infinity Eggs, because oh boy, those were terrible. <laughs> like, <sighs> like that was that was bad. That was bad. Like they could have made better eggs. They could have made oh, not eggs. They could have made better Infinity Gems if they really wanted to. But did they, you give yours to your mom? I did. <laughs> but the statues were nice. Love the statues. Statues were pretty ace. I was on. I, I really wanted a Captain Marvel statue anyway. And I wanted especially make it. That was the thing. The roster was coming along really good. They started messing up. Yeah, because they started putting in Marvel 3 characters. And not even the really, really good ones. And what's weird was that Capcom just kind of put in a bunch of their own characters on that side. And it's like, okay, fine. We get it. You can only put in so many Marvel people. What about your side? Yeah. Like, they could have put new characters on their side. They, they have control over their own side, I believe. So why are they just like not just put new characters all together for the Capcom side. Like, they could have did that. Or at least characters we ain't seen in a minute. Yeah. I'd have taken Jin Satome. <sighs> that would have been so good! But would he have looked good, though? <laughs> like, that would have been... I don't know why Captain Commander didn't make the, could make the cut. Like, he should have been there. Like, easy. And People you know, love him. The worst part of it is that this gave way for another game to take its place yep let's talk about it (laughs) d-b-z-f-z-h-i-j-k dragon ball fighters there you go (laughs) that game was also helpful in the demise of mvci because it was new it was flashy and it was dragon ball it was i mean one of the biggest anime ips in the entire world like, who cares if it's good? It's Dragon Ball. And we never had a proper 2D fighting game in a long time for Dragon Ball. We had that other one for Arxis that put on the 3DS, which was dumb. Ugh. And as it turns out, it actually wasn't that bad. Just the wrong console for it, though. No, not that. I'm talking oh. about Fighters. Oh, yeah. Fighters, when it came out, was fun. It's just that roster didn't get better. They was like, so you like Goku? They have such a strong cast. Yes. A wide, they even went their own way and, and started putting in the movies. Yeah. Which opens it up even more. Yep. I was looking for PyCon, even though he wasn't coming. PyCon could have been in here. It would have, I would have, man. Tapion could have been in here. So many great, because the DBZ universe is vast. There are so many characters. Android 13 could have been in here. Yo, I would have played him. I mean, why not? He's a, he's a trucker. <laughs> Every time I see, I think about Terry Bogart. I'm like, that's Terry Android. I mean, they even went so far as to go the GT route. Yeah, that was weird. Yeah, y'all could have put Super 17 in here. Why didn't they? They put 17 in the game after a while as DLC, which we saw coming. Like, that was the main issue with it. Well, besides the other gameplay elements that weren't that great. Super Dash is whack. Yeah. I stand by that. The game has such a huge, like, debut. And then after a while, it just kind of tapered off. Like, now it's like you can barely find people playing it online. Like, there's still a very, like, passionate community, but it's nowhere near where it used to be. Like, not even a little bit. Like, the the community was huge at first. And now it's like the tournament scene is smaller, the player base is smaller, 
the streaming is small. Everything is way smaller now. Like you might see like 10 people streaming it right now at this moment. Well, that's because the game just, I don't know, man. It's not compelling to watch. No, I mean, let's take its first outing as a, uh, what was it? Was that Evo? Everybody's doing the cell screams. Oh yeah. As hype as the cell scream was, did you see how many times you were able to do it? Hmm. Because so many people were using cell. Yeah. And Bardock. Yep. Oh yeah, Bar- <laughs> Bring it on. <laughs> right. Bardock broke that game. Bardock became the the Virgil of that game. Only to be dethroned by Gotenks. Oh god. Who then got dethroned by GT Goku. Oh god. Who is cancer <laughs> he is the he oh god it's like the character like roster that they kept adding to the game just wasn't up to par i'm in a weird place with dragon ball fighters because now i'm at the point because I, I used to be really against it but now i'm at the point where i like it enough to want it to be better and that's really all i want just be better we already know another season's coming. We've already found the animations with y'all doing stuff for the Tournament of Power. So y'all might as well just go ahead and put those characters in there. Yeah. Yeah, just go ahead and throw in your, your precious Ultra Instinct Goku. <laughs> I hate that we said that. Go ahead, put in put in Red Brain so I can use her as a training dummy. Wow. Yup. Okay. Someone hates Red Brain. <laughs> but... If I had one character I'd want in here, it would be Dispo, because I want his English voice actor to get more work, because he is great. All right, someone's very passionate about Dispo. Have you heard Dispo's English? I don't think I have. I will play that for you later. Okay. He's very great, and very, very black. (laughs) Well, while we're on the subject of Dragon Ball Fire, let's talk about the biggest rivalry ah, of the scene. Which, Sonic, Fox, and Koichi. That was so epic. Like, that was such a good rivalry. I would say out of all the rivalries from last decade, that was probably the one that was virtually a real rivalry. It was actually two people who are relatively the same in skill going against each other. And it was fun to watch. Like, they were going it back and toxic. forth. It they wasn't were, toxic. They it were was, good to each other. Yeah, they're like actual friends, too. It's just that when they play a game, it's like, all right. Ain't no friendship here. Yeah, you get you getting busted in the face. Yeah, man. On site when we I play want this. that side. Oh yeah, that I was, was uh, I I man. That. Yeah, I want that side. Yeah, that was a big deal because I think that's how you won Evo that year too. Well, that's what they say. <laughs> that's what they say. But you know, I think he just yeah, kinda, take that for what you will. I think he just kind of like stopped his momentum. Maybe with that first to ten. Yes, that was so good. You know, time for got busted at the end. I think. I mean. It's it's ten matches. Yeah. You get used to a person after that. Yeah, that's true. I think that was a part of the, that's when the scene was like really good and really like big and it was like fun to watch Dragon Ball Fighters. Yeah. And then it's like after a while it's like Yeah. So yeah, these new characters. That's not a lot of hype around them anymore. This is just they're not playing them. The only new character they played was was Goku. Yeah. Yeah. The thing that's exciting about games, right? Is that when new characters come out, they are usually there to spice the game up a bit. Yeah. It's supposed to, at least. And nobody played those new characters. Nah. Not even a little bit. Like, they might do, like, a video or two, or they might do some streams with the character, but they don't, like, go to tournaments with them, and they just kind of drop them after a while. Like, okay, no more streaming this character anymore. Like, if if a top eight had, like, a Jiren in it, or a Videl, or Janemba... I'd watch that. The Dell's actually good too. He's all right. At least he started out good. Yeah, she's all right. I don't know. Playing her just isn't fun though. No, no, it isn't. I was expected to have like the greatest. Time. I think the only girl I have like, like the best time playing with is probably seventeen. My best time has been Broly. Which one? New Broly. Okay, good. I was gonna say the old one. I'm like, Ugh. No. Ugh. Grab <laughs> after. Gr- <laughs> Sorry. You can't just throw that in there. Well, you talking about Broly, like, that's, ugh. The old Broly's gross. You heard it here. Old Broly's gross. <sighs> All right, where are we going next? All right, we got only, like, three more topics for us. Man, we've been going for a while. We have been, but it's, like, the whole decade. We try to, like, cover so much. 
All right, so we got no, we got four more. Okay, we're gonna let's breeze through this one really quick. The the collusion one that was funny. That was that was so funny. If you don't know, it was at a Blaze Blue tournament, and uh, don't ask me which one. I'm sorry. Yeah, I forgot which tournament it was, but I know. But what's his two name? of the top players who were there decided they were gonna pick Izayoi. My girl, I was so bad. The problem being, <laughs> neither of them played Izayoi at any no. point through the tournament. None. And so they were like, whoa, what is what is this trash? And yeah. not only were they playing, they were playing bad. Yeah. It was obvious that that so was. So what they decided they were going to do was that third place got a bigger cut of the pot, as I recall. They had, yeah, they got, a, like, they got like extra money because. That was BS, man. Yeah. I forgot his name. The one that was a TO at the time. I forgot his name. Shinsen? Uh, yeah, Shinsen called it. He was like, oh, no. No, we're not doing that. <sighs> nah, he, he wasn't having it. None of it. Not even a little bit of it. Oh, uh, Kalu, that was hilarious. That was so funny. I was just mad as my girl that was the part of this whole foolishness, though. I love Isayoi. You know, she's hard as crap to play. To say the least, <laughs> like she requires. I've been playing Blaze Blue all this time, and I still don't have a grasp on her. She requires a lot of precision and like execution to get anything out of her. <sighs> you know what, though, she's still fun to at least watch because a good Izayoi player. Oh yeah, lots of stuff happens with good Izayoi players on screen. Ah, here we go. Here we go. That happened at Frosty's, actually. In 20, oh, okay. That makes sense. 2013? Damn, that was so long ago. Yeah, man. Uh, Third place got the pop bonus from first and second place. Oh, okay. That's why. They were going to split it, I think. Yeah. Yeah, Shinsen was like, no, not on my watch. Shout out to Shinsen. He's like... He held that down. He's like the anime guy for Chicago. Like, I wonder if he still plays now. I haven't seen him stream in a while. I don't know. Well, he'll probably be at Frosty's more likely, so we'll see him there. <sighs> All right, what's next? Because that was a little tidbit of a story. But that was just funny, though. <laughs> that was pretty funny. So now, oh man, this one's sad. Well, before we get to the sad one, well, let's get to Arlen Ash. Okay. And his rise. Well, actually, you know, we we skipped over one. Oh yeah. One the one about um that one rivalry in Street Fighter. That was hey Brad and Wolf Crow? Yes. Probably the probably the most entertaining, visually stimulating rivalry I've ever seen at FGC. I'm not even sure why they were like I guess it was it's just fighting games. So. It was just fighting games, but it just got a little too perky. Remember they was on um E League acting crazy? Oh yeah. Yeah, it just kept going from there. Like, it just kept going because like Will Crow would say something, then K Brad would say something, and then that incredible pop off we will never forget. One of the greatest pop offs in fighting game history. So good. K Brad wasn't shit for that. I'm sorry. That was hilarious. No, he wasn't. He wasn't. And yeah, Will Crow was Will Crow he could play very well. It's just that he always has like he's always really what's the word I want to use? He's I won't say he complains a lot, but he complains a lot. Whiny? Yeah, there we go. Why he's very whiny about stuff. And he stopped playing Street Fighter Five too out of nowhere. Bye. Yeah, him and K Brad actually. I think K Brad. Well, K Brad has other stuff going on. I think K Brad streams a lot. Though. Yeah. So you know his stream is fun too. Yeah. Shout out to K Brad. K Brad's one of my favorite Cami players like since four that I kept up with. Yeah, he he has been Cami faithful. Yeah. Yeah, that was a good, that was a good rivalry. That's probably my favorite. That's probably my second. Well, I mean my favorite my favorite rivalry of last decade. I would put like Goichi second, or it might be third. I might put oh, Goichi man. Goichi versus Sonic Fox third. I would put probably go uh, Sonic Fox versus um, Perfect Legend second because that one's kind of over now. But the K Brown Wolf Chrome that was like real real. Like they was out in public acting the crazy. All right, I'll take that. Especially on that E League. That was hilarious. They had to get security, I think, almost. They was really like, all right, guys, chill out. <laughs> like, don't get to fist the cuss over right, fighting they games. They were beefing, beefing. They was really beefing. Like, they really didn't like each other. And it was funny because, like, K-Brad didn't have a problem. It was just that Wolf Crawling is just, wait, what did he say? Oh, he said something that was iconic. Oh, what did he say? 
uh, I forgot what he said. He said something to him that was really viral for a little bit. I forgot what it was. Yeah, I remember that. I gotta remind myself. I gotta watch that that clip again from E League. All right, so let's go to the next topic. I told to make sure we right, these last two are sad. Let's yeah. just get that out there. Well, we haven't talked about one thing. Well, we can talk about Ar- Arlen actually before yeah, we talk about last two. Yeah. Okay. So you want to talk Arlen? Yeah, let's talk Arlen. All first. right, let's talk Arlen. And how he he just kind of came out of nowhere. He came at the tail end of the decade and like changed the whole face of the community for Tekken forever. Yeah, man. People have been saying that the Middle East is, is they got some hitters out there, man. Man, like I've known a couple of people. His name was uh, what was his name? Uh, Lion O. I remember he did like Lions Den. I think over in the UK, he would always say like a lot of like Middle Eastern players that would come to his um events were really good at Tekken. This was back in like 2012, 2011. We first started doing Russian. They were warning them, man. They were saying like they they got killers here. And the problem was they couldn't get out of the country because, of course, getting visas is hard. Like, it's expensive. If you don't have the money, you can't... You know, who has enough money to go get a visa? Like, unless you have a really good job, you, you don't have enough money to get a visa. And it's hard to get anyway. Yeah. So a lot of them couldn't travel out to go to different countries and play. But, but things man, have changed when they now. got out. Man, Arlen Ash came and won Evo Japan for Tekken. Then he won Evo US for Tekken. I think he got second place for Evo, uh, not Evo, for, uh, no, Tekken World Tour. Was it te- was it second or was it third? I think he got, I think he got, he got top eight, though. Still great. Second. But still great. He had a great year. He's just such a great player. And he put his whole, like, country on the map. Like, now people are looking like, oh, man, maybe we should start going. Actually, you know what? Knee went to um to um to Pakistan now to start training. I bet. Cause he got wiggity washed by Arlen quite a few times. Oof! So he had like, okay, I gotta figure this out. So he went to Pakistan, and started playing, and he did well. He said he learned a lot because he did really good Tekken World Tour this year. Well, now we're gonna see some good ass Tekken. Yes, for next season. Uh, yeah, Tekken Seven. I would say it's probably it might be my second favorite Tekken after three. Yeah, easily. I haven't played this much Tekken since Part Three. Wow, that's a, that's a pretty bold claim. Yeah, because I played 4, but I didn't play it that long. People hated 4. And people <sighs> like 5 until Dark Resurrection came out, and 6 was... Ugh. 6 was rough. Ugh. Then Tekken Tag Tournament 2 made me hate Tekken. So, Tekken 7 made me love this series again. Tekken Tag 2 was a bit of a mistake. Tekken Tag 2 was a disease. Like, it was a virus. Yikes. Have you played that game online? Yes. Against people? Yes. Like, seeing people play Lee, uh, like, uh, who is it? Uh, Lee Chow Lan and Violet teams? Which is a cancer team? <laughs> like, why? Like, why? I, why oh do you want to inflict such harm? The people want to inflict the most harm. Talking well, about TOD combos? Pfft, they had them. I feel like I stopped playing after I played a former friend of mine, and he was one of those people who's like, I mean, yeah, you won, but you're not good at Tekken because all you did was juggle combos. What? Oh, I forgot. I remember, I remember that. I remember that. Yeah, people still talk about that stuff, man. People are like, if you do juggle combos, you're not really that good at Tekken. Tekken's about juggle combos. What are you talking about? Like, have you considered not getting hit by the combo? Yeah. And learning your own? Yeah. Well, I only use fundamentals. I don't really use juggles. Juggles are fundamentals. What are and you talking about? I allow about? my opponent to get up off the ground for a real fight. Oh my god. I like two player games. <laughs> I enjoy a challenge. I mean, the balance system was stupid. Yeah. That was so dumb. Why would they do that? They fixed it with the um the uh, with the corkscrew now? Yeah. That's better. Combos aren't that long. It's just when you get to the corner is when things get bad. But that's still corner carry and all that stuff. But at least you have to get to there. Whereas balance system was just stupid. In the balance system, it, it's it's amazing the difference makes that um you only bounce up and down as opposed to getting launched forward. Yeah, amazing the difference that makes. Man, the combos are shorter, and the gameplay is actually much more entertaining. Like I mean, they make wall combos more viable now because of course you're getting hit by the wall and like. Right. It's like that um what is it, the Gee stage? Whew. If you play your cards right, you can you can get through the whole stage. <laughs> a TOD combo, man. 
or that um what is it the um that uh what is it called the ancient ruin state where you go down to the floors uh, and stuff yes it's a good stage too but just Tekken 7, just like, oh, it's such a great game. And just Arlen Ash, just a lot of other players. Like, a lot of people came out of nowhere. It's just like, that's been really good to see. I love when people come out of nowhere and just, like, shake up the meta and shake up the whole, like, scene. It's always fun. And he's such a good person, too. He's so nice and stuff. And he, he's so humble, too, which is good. He's not an asshole. I wonder if he's going to become a combo breaker. I don't know. That's a good question. I know he was looking I'm at... I'm sure you will let us know. I will definitely know what you guys know, because I'm definitely a fan, so... I think he's he was looking at some places between now and I think the first quarter of the year because he had to plan them out, of course, ahead of time. Of course, um, I think he'd probably be a common breaker more than likely. That's such a big event. All right, like that's huge. I don't think he's gonna Maybe be at Frosty be though. Chance. Nah, I doubt it. Yeah. Maybe this would be a chance to meet him. I would probably actually ask for an autograph. Like he's one of the people I would ask for an autograph from. All right. All right. All right, so let's talk about the last two topics. Which one want to do first? Oh, let's talk about Shoryuken.com because the other one that's it's heavier. Yeah, Shoryuken.com. Um, one of the I think that probably is the biggest, or at least was the biggest fighting game website on the internet. Like hands down, <sighs> the forums were great. They had like all types of tiers and stuff. They had really good articles. Like, now we go on short. Yeah, I'm gonna go on there right now. Probably has that letter of them saying why they're not doing anything new really with it. You think so? Yeah, it might have that. I mean, it should. I remember I was watching uh, one of Sir John's streams and he was talking about it too because he went to the website and saw them talking about it and Let's why. See. We got an interview, an interview, interview, something about. Oh man, they are. Wow. Slim pickings. Very slim. Yeah. Like, there's some reviews here. There's interviews there, but nothing like how it used to be. Man, it was a definitive website for fighting games. If you want to learn about fighting games, you went to shuriken.com. Like, that was just was the thing to do. Oh, boy. And now it's definitely not the same. And, and, and their articles are spaced so far apart. Yeah. You got seven hours ago, four days ago, four weeks ago. Whew. One month ago, one month ago. Yeah. One month ago, two weeks ago, two months ago, two months ago, three months ago, three months ago, three months ago. You get the idea. Yeah. Shurgan.com is such a big part of the FGC. Like, it's just, I mean, it's during the rise of, like, Marvel 3 and stuff, that website was so important to that game. Like, you could, I mean, I think they, they were one of the ones that broke the whole, like, UNVC 3 coming out and the, the characters when it got leaked oh man sure you can dot com was the place to be for a lot of things it was you wanted to learn some tech sure you can dot com you wanted to learn some news about a game that you may have missed sure you can dot com you wanted to see compilations and stuff sure you can dot com yep we were on there too oh yeah a couple of our videos ended up on there shout out to them for posting them yeah man yeah, it was always nice getting shouted out by them but now oh man it's a, a shadow of his former self honestly and i think i was watching Mr. John and they said why it happened a lot of it dealt with the fact that they were having a hard time with like getting content as far as like money's concerned because like a lot of people weren't getting paid for stuff and it was mostly about it was like wherever you posted you got paid the same amount so people stopped really posting anything of value for a while and the quality of the article started to wane too. So, and then people started to leave as well. So, I see. That was one of the bigger reasons why it went down, which is sad because Sergio got time. I mean, that was a whole brand. Like, yeah. Like, that was like a part of the FGC. Like, you went to Sergio.com if you want to know anything going on. Like, that people was just what had you did. SRK shirts. Yep. Especially since it was but, so tied to like Evil and stuff. It was like a necessary place to go to anyway. Yep. Brackets, tech. All that stuff, man. Events, just like all of it. And like now, I mean, for better or worse, Event Hubs is the de facto FGC website. <laughs> it's just that some of the stuff they do and post aren't exactly useful. Or, yeah, it sort of comes, I mean, I mean, I get it. It's a business at the end of the day. You do have to get, like, you know, views and stuff. But some of the content is very questionable. Let's see what they got right now. <laughs> Um, something about reuse V Scale 2 from Jimmy. 
five games, uh, fighting games of 2020. They're talking about the Smash mod. Martial artists doing the techniques of fighting game characters. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate's current most popular. St- okay. All right. Stages on Smash. Something from Desk. And yeah, goes on like that. Yeah, it's a it's a definitely a hodgepodge of stuff. It's a tabloid is what it is. Well, that's probably a better way of looking at it, but it's just not the same as SRK. It's a very different like it's a very different format. It's definitely a very different like way content is for is um produced on that site. It's just different. It's definitely different. It's not I feel same. like Event Hubs is like a magazine. Well, SRK was kind of like an encyclopedia. Yeah, I would say that. That's definitely a good way of looking at it. They still have really good guides on their website like right now. Like you can go to like the UNVC3 guide and see all like frame data and stuff right now. Like it is, I've used it a couple of times for old games. It's like, you want to see a tier list? Look that up real quick. Whereas Vinhub's tier list is based off like um, fan votes, which yeah. is kind of a and weirder. Usage. And use that's kind of a weirder. Well, I guess that's more of a empirical way of looking at it but or but i don't know it's but just, it, i don't know man that it, it seems more anecdotal than anything yeah it's never like useful information honestly i don't know just srk is just good it's, it's it's a hard pill to swallow that because i used to go in so much like it was like a part of my everyday thing like, it was like oh let me check srk real quick yeah let's see what they're doing oh a new trailer came out cool let this come out and that comes out oh okay like srk is part of one reason why i even want to like add more fuc stuff to our website because I was like, oh, this is amazing. I want to do this too. But also, I have an, a love for RPGs, so it's kind of hard to like not do that too. Yeah. I mean, you gotta, you, I think we try to do a good balance of the two. Yeah, I think we do a good job of it because I, I am obsessed with both. Like, I can't, if you ever ask me, like, what's my favorite between the two genres, I will never be able to tell anybody. I feel like the only thing we don't do is cater to the sports crowd. And I'm sorry. We it's just, just not, it's that's just, just not happening. That's not there. It's not us, man. I learned that it's important to do stuff you care about because if you do stuff you care about, you people who care about it will come to you. And we don't care about like sports games. Ain't no point of us trying to like put that into our site that doesn't work. I mean, we sorry. Yeah. We tried. We tried. You can tell what stuff we care about because it's pretty much on there. Yeah. So it's sad because I know how like running websites is hard. And if you're doing it as a way to gain like money and revenue, you start doing things that aren't exactly savory <laughs> to say the least, or continue that you know driving people to your site, driving um engagement and people coming there and getting sponsors and getting like advertising all that stuff. There's so much in tied to it, so it's like I get it, it's hard. But I'm glad that we're at a point where we don't need like money from Re- Rush now, so we can run to wherever we want. You take places hey. we want to. We still get the benefits from it, which is definitely like getting free games and stuff. So, well, I mean, they get the PR, so it all works out. Yeah, they get the PR, so it's a good thing. Like, I would never really. I remember back in the day, I wanted to like make Rush Down like a primary source of income. Now, as an adult, I don't, because first of all, I don't want my opinion being so readily needed to where it's a part of my income as well. Like, if I say some people don't like, it's talking on my site, and then I stop getting money. Like, I don't want that. Yeah, because we're pretty opinionated very opinionated that's how the site started it started from us talking about street fire 3 versus um street fire alpha 3 that was such a dub thread it was it was it it, it fueled us to like do this in the first place like you know what we should do this that was a long thread that was like 300 comments yeah we went back i don't even think we got to a conclusion we kind of didn't but that was like 10 years ago almost yeah that was man damn us at the start of the decade us at the end of it. Very different. Like, we don't go through that long tangents like we used to. Like, we don't even be like, all right, man, you got this. Yeah. <laughs> it's just going back. Yeah, I'm not going to argue with you about this Alpha 3. I'm, I'm not. I mean, it's a you point argument. Like, I'm not in that place anymore. Like, I appreciate both games. All right. Like, I'm not. Actually, I like, I like Street Fighter Alpha 2 more than 3, so. And that's fine, because Alpha 2 is a better game. Yeah, it is a better game. It was just, I was just like, I like this thing. He said he doesn't like this thing. He's wrong. You fool. Yeah, that was me. That was my energy back then when I was in my 20s. Yeah, 30s is like, kind of just chill out. It's like, like man, dude, whatever, man. let's play both. <laughs> let's just do that. Like, let's play the Street Fighter 3. Let's play the Street Fighter Alpha 2. Let's do that. We went on a really long tangent, but it was all tied into SRK. Like, yeah. shout out to them. Now for the heaviest thing. Oh, yeah. We can't do this. Thing about the FTC about talking about this 
And uh, I guess we'll just call it the the Me Too movement in the FGC. Yep. And how it has ousted a few people yep. for being predators. Yeah. So the FGC has always had an issue with sexual harassment and sexual assault. It just never was. People didn't find they had a voice to actually say anything about it because, you know, if you're a top player, you're like an influential person, people wouldn't believe you if you go against somebody they believe to be really popular. Whereas now, after the actual Me Too movement and, you know, mainstream society, people in the FGC felt more comfortable to speak out about things they've experienced, which is good because you don't want, we don't want anybody feeling like they can't be safe from right. harm while they're going to an event. And it's really sad that some of the people that, you know, are considered the FGC's best or famous or popular it it sucks seeing that they are the ones who are being predators and preying on people and you just got you, you can't tolerate that kind of stuff yeah not even a little bit they have to be you, you got to get rid of them yeah and it's it seems to be like this whole big resistance to it too where everybody's like oh well this is getting a little weird because everybody's accusing everybody else and it's like no they're speaking out. They're speaking out because they didn't think they had a voice before. Yep. They're in this environment where everybody's kind of just like in a good boys club where like, if you don't say anything, I won't say anything. Yep. And now that lid is being blown right open. And I think it's important too. people should feel safe. People have been ever since this happened, people have been talking about all sorts of atrocities, man. Yeah. Like people having a drink spiked. Yeah, that was crazy. Right people. Down. Who have been harassed and touched and all just sorts of stuff, man. And it's been both genders too. It hasn't just been oh. like because at first it was just saying like it was just a uh, quote unquote woman issue, and you know that's not the case. It's it's on both sides. It's just that you know men definitely didn't have the space to say anything because you know it's a boys' club. Like, oh, why are you talking about this? You supposed to want that. You supposed to want a girl to touch you. Why are you talking about this? That's right. stupid. You. It know. was really toxic. Very. I'm glad that the men that did speak out are able to have a space to speak out about it because it's it makes it a place where people feel comfortable to talk about stuff like that out loud. And I'm very glad that we are progressing in such a way that this conversation can continue. Yep. For better or for worse, because we have seen some trash videos come out of people about these issues. Yeah. I'm so thankful that the TOs have had like a really unanimous like decision about this and have supported the victims of this stuff. Like I'm very happy about that. Like I'm very happy that they've been able to like say, okay, we have to come to a, a conclusion that this is not right. We have to like step up. Yeah, they are very no nonsense about this. Yeah, kind of stuff. shout out to all the tos who have been like, yep, you can't come. Bye. Yep, you're banned. <laughs> you can't come to no more of our events. And just so people aren't thinking that they're just jumping at every accusation it's the accusations that have merits yeah the ones that have been proven and documented and shown because there have been accusations against people that have been proven to not be true there are other ones that have been out that have been proven to be very true very very true it's not like this is some kind of format where we can just point fingers recklessly no no people have to show that yeah, this person's guilty. Yeah. Ta guilty. <sighs> now, now. Okay. We're not going to start pointing fingers and saying names. Well, we don't have to. I mean, it's already out there on the internet. They yeah. can easily find any of this stuff. This isn't like some secret or something. So I'm glad that the, we are now fostering an environment where it's uncomfortable for people to think about sexual harassment and all that stuff that used to be pretty cool. Yeah, and commonplace. Because it was like... What they would do is they would vilify the the girls like, oh, it's just a pro hoe, it's just a hoe. Don't don't think nothing about her. When it's reality, it's like this is a girl who was just like harassed by you in the first place. I only wish that we've had this conversation a lot sooner. I don't think we were ready back then. No, we weren't, but I wish we were. Yeah, because it's not like this is going to be something that is going to stop, and this isn't something that is new. These kind of occurrences have been happening in front of us for a long time that is also true and we have not held those people accountable 
And it's not like we can retroactively do it. I mean, we could, but I don't think it's going to happen unless they do it again. Yeah. I think now people are just a little more hypersensitive to it, too, which they should be right about now. Right. Good. Very <laughs> like, good. You should be concerned about how you touch people and how you treat people and how and stuff. You should be concerned about that stuff. You should just go through life being an asshole and thinking everybody is just expendable or you're just like at your disposal to do whatever you want with them. Like they're people and human, they're, they're actual human beings who deserve respect. Like that's just the end of the day. That's what you're supposed to do. But you know, some people don't practice that. Unfortunately. Yeah. One thing at a time though. I mean, I feel like the FGC now is at a better place than it was years ago. Man, FGC 2010 to FGC 2020 are two different places. Yes. And I do think that there's room for improvement. Oh, of course. It will take that room to do that improvement. Yeah. I Here's mean, the hoping anyway. We're in the growing pains phase of the FGC right now. Things really? kind of hurt, but it's it's important to go through that because it gets you to the other side of, you know, being in a place where everyone can just enjoy playing fighting games. That's where everybody wants to, everybody wants to play fighting games. That's it. With other people. That's it. That's the main thing at FGC. It's to play fighting games with other humans. That's it. No matter what your sex, creed, gender, gender expression or identity or sexuality and all that stuff. You're hey, a fam, pick up the sticks. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. And not care about those things. Like, okay, they're gay or they're trans or whatever. Who they pick. <laughs> they right. play I'm t- worried less about what's between your legs and more about who your main is. Exactly. Like, are you picking only? T- are you a tear whore? I care about that. That's more important to me because I don't want to deal with fighting a Virgil team. Oof. And we bring it back around. Yes, yes, we did. Because I'm salty. <laughs> I used to be so it's much okay. more saltier back then than I was now. It's okay, man. I don't play Virgil. You still play Doom and. Who's the other guy you play? You play Doom, you play Ver- not Virgil, you play Doom, Wesker, and what's his face? Uh, Deadpool a lot. I remember that team. Deadpool isn't even top tier. You still played him though. So, or you had um, what's his face? Um, Strider. Man, that, that was short lived. And then you start playing Felicia. Also short lived. I don't care. <laughs> Look, man, my current team is Cap Sentinel Doom. I mean, what do you want from me? Oh, you play Sentinel too. Oh, you know I played Sentinel. You hated that. You were a whole generate. That that was when we had 1.3 million health. You are completely toxic. Whoa. Can't just say that about me. I'm not toxic. I like I like fighting games. <sighs> Whatever. All right. Do you have anything like you're looking forward to for the, like the future of the FGC? Uh, In the foreseeable future or beyond? Let's see. Better fighting games. Definitely that. He goes, you know, we're getting a lot of new fighting games next year. Looking forward to that. Looking forward to that popcorn. Shout Always out to the Popcorn Baron. Always good. Always shout him out. Looking forward to seeing what Combo Break is bringing because uh, they, they, I think their lease or whatever they're going to do is finalized or yep, almost th- there. It's pretty much final. He said he's going to make the announcement on the 14th of, Ju- of January. So turn up for that. Can't wait for that. I got to get my room. I got to get the rooms. Um, can't wait to get my runbacks against people at Combo Breaker. <laughs> okay, because I'm salty. <laughs> Let's see how that goes. <laughs> Look, I'm I'm taking a win off somebody. <laughs> I hope you do. I I'm, hope I'm not. I'm not gonna go in there acting all scared and stuff like. That. I want to play the mirror. No, I'm gonna pull them. I'm, I'm gonna play. <laughs> gonna play the mirror. I'm gonna, I'm gonna play the mirror. <laughs> Be doing this. Uh. Wait, was G out? No, he wasn't. What? He came out after. Wait, did you play? Was he out last year when we went to Combo Breaker? Yes, he was. Okay. That's the mirror I'm talking about. Ah, okay. Was Smug? Yes. Okay. I want to play the, the G mirror. Okay. Well, you got to do it now. Yeah. Well, Parker's we got that here. new V skill, so. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Um, For me, what am I looking for? I'm looking forward to a new Guilty Gear a lot. Like, I really want to play that. And I also want to know what the heck that riot fighting is going to be about because I feel like that's going to be a game changer if it's done right. If it's done right is the key word. So yeah, I mean it's going to have good net code no matter what. Because the one thing I don't want it to be is an arena fighter. Well, I don't think it's going to be. That's going to be a two D fighter. I hope so. Do you see the um clip? I feel like I've seen it, but I've forgotten it. 
It was a, it's a two D it's a um two D fighter still. Okay, well, who they got working with them? Uh, that's important too. That's a good question. I know Riot's doing it, but I know that um Tom Cannon and the other dude who did GDPO are helping with it. Time out. One thing that we didn't talk about that I want to briefly mention, which is Power Rangers fight Yo. for the grid. While not the greatest fighting game of the decade, is a testament to how much a game can improve over time. Because yes. that game, I don't think it's been out for an entire year yet. Nope, it came out I think in April. And the strides they made Big to ones. make that game as good as it is today, kudos. We need more of that energy in 2020 and I w- beyond. This is a small company. Yep. Capcom can bring that energy. Namco. Well, I mean, Tekken's pretty good. Let's, yeah. Let's, we'll, 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 co- we'll go over that one. But Street Fighter and just Capcom in general can definitely bring that same energy. Man, all of y'all. Yeah. That game's amazing. Shout now. out to Power Rangers, Battle for the Grid. All right. That game was great. We should have talked about that. We should have. But. We're talking about it now, so right. go buy it. Go buy that game. It's worth it. Well worth your money. Yeah. It may not have been worth it the launch, but it's worth it now. I promise. I pro- and hey, you get Virgil. You guys <laughs> like Virgil? <laughs> the way they just like put him in the game without putting him in the game was incredible. I need more quantum power. They did that. They I'm motivated. That was probably one of the best reveal trailers ever. He's motivated. I'm so mad they did that, but that was for the the Marvel heads out there. See? It was it came so full circle. See, love you guys, because the guy who did Virgil's voice was the Power Ranger for Quantum Ranger, so it was like so full circle. And there you go. Yeah, play Power Ranger. Play it now and play Skullgirls too. Wait, you want me to say it too? No, you don't have to. Do it. I'm just telling you, right? Play Skullgirls too. All right, play Skullgirls. Go get it. It's probably cheap on on PC right now. Or playing on Switch. Yeah. Is it good on Switch? I haven't played it yet. Uh, it seems to be comparable to everything else. Huh. Why do I buy it on Switch? No. <laughs> you have it on, like, what? how many systems? Don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in to our decade review for the FGC. Thanks for su- supporting us all this time. Um, we'll be back with a new episode probably after Frosty's. Then we're going to take a little break, so you won't probably see a new podcast for a while for the fgc ism but we'll be still updating our website so i would go to uh, net for new stuff and thanks for tuning in guys we'll see you next episode